Hello. How was worship night? Yeah. Weren't you doing it over there? Is it over? It's over? Oh, that's fair. That's fair. That makes sense. I'm bad at math. Okay, how are you guys? How's everybody doing? Good. I'm good because I'm having a baby. Oh, I'm not having a baby. My wife's having a baby, but I, uh, it's part of me. It's part, it's, it's part, it's mine. Half of mine. Half of me is a baby. <laughs> it's a baby. It's coming. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Um, anyway, uh, I, uh, yeah, that's big news for our family. I hope you guys have big news in yours someday soon. Uh, just anything is usually good news anyway. Okay, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to stop talking about that. Okay, hold on. Just give me five seconds. Yo, what up, garage? What's up, guys? I'm back. How are you guys? I'm doing good. We just did that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I did. Okay, um, well, here's the thing. Um, yeah, I'm glad you guys are here tonight. I'm glad uh, to see with you and be with you here in the middle of the summer. So I don't know. You guys have a lot of things going on. So the fact that you're here makes me happy, and I'm glad you're here for that reason. Um, here's the thing. We're starting a new series, and so we're going to jump into it a little bit um, quicker than we usually do. Um, cool thing about this series, this is where we're going into questions from God. Um, here's the thing. I thought it was a cool idea that Mason and I were kind of talking through um, Oftentimes when we read the Bible or we, we go to the garage or we go to a big service or we're doing a Bible study on our own, we are reading and, and interacting with God in Scripture, right? And here in, the, in Scripture, we actually read things that God speaks to us and he asks questions occasionally. Not all the time, but occasionally he asks us questions. Um, and the thing about questions from God is often we don't actually hear the question or dig into the question. We just hear the question and then we wait for him to tell us what he wants us to do about whatever the question is. So here in this series, the hope and the goal is, is we're going to look at a bunch of different scenarios and different stories where God actually asks us questions and what he wants us to pay attention to when he's asking us this question, right? Or these questions. Because here's the thing. When we read scripture and we just zoom past the question, we usually see God doing miracles. We see usually God's plan coming unfolded and perfect plan being restored. All those things are happening. But usually before that happens, there's a question that we just kind of jump over. So before we get into all these miracles and all these big moments, in scripture, we want to actually look at these questions that God actually asks to us that we need to pay attention to, okay? So in this series, as we look at a bunch of different instances where God is speaking to someone and asking them a question, here's the hope and what we're looking for, that when we look at these questions God asks us, we can look at how people in the Bible have responded to those questions or maybe if we have encountered that same question in our life, how we have responded in the past, and surely how we will respond in time to come. Because as life goes on, these questions will pop up again and again and again, and so we need to know what and how to respond to what God is asking us in those times. But before I get there... Um, I kind of want to ask a, a rhetorical question. How many of you, don't, you don't have to raise your hand or shout it out, just in your own brain, how many of you have actually had an experience in your life where one decision so dumb has changed your life? Just give it a second to think about it. In your life, is there one decision at least where you would say it was so dumb that it actually changed your life. Certainly at some point in your life, if you haven't had that experience yet, it will happen. It will happen. There will be something that you decide to do that is so dumb, it literally changes your life. In my life, um, I'm just going to be real with you for a little bit, for a second. I'm going to tell you, this is kind of part of my testimony in, in, a, in a sense. But when I was like 22, 23, I was an intern here at Crossroads. Okay, I was in the middle of Crossroads garage internships. I was at school, but I would come back for summers and I would be here all the time I could. 
in that time, I had become friends with a lot of people. I had a younger sister who graduated, and she had a lot of friends that I was friends with. Some of the friends that are I'm great friends with still to this day, a few of them are people that I was in their weddings. I'll, I was in, they'll be in my, they were in mine. I'll be in another one, I'm sure. Not in my, not, not in my other one. <laughs> but very, very good friends. But I was about three years older than them. And in that time, I had a lot of trouble um, kind of trying to find out where I was a friend and where I was a garage intern or a leader or somebody that had a, a mentor role in, in their life. And I was, but I, I, I blurred lines really badly. And so in that time, there was a, a time in my life where I actually was of age and I had bought and purchased liquor and beer for these friends that were underage um, and I said, here you go, have fun. Can I come too? Um, and so I spent, I did that three or four times. Um, and I'm not proud of it. Um, it's not a good thing. Don't do that. It's not smart. It's not wise. Um, but in that time, I didn't think it would affect my, my reputation. I didn't think it would affect my work. I didn't think it would affect my friendships. I didn't think it would affect the way that I was supposed to be leading students to know Jesus more. But on a similar Sunday, like tonight, I was asked to come in early as an intern. My boss, Jeremy, dear friend of mine, somebody I love and care about a whole lot, he called me in. He said, hey, Jack, I need to talk to you before garage tonight. And I said, okay. And when somebody says those words, instantly there's like a, an empty gut and, and kind of just a, a rock in your stomach feeling. And so I came in and... He asked me the very same question that we're going to dig into tonight. And we're going to wrap up tonight with the rest of that story, but I think more of importantly, that question that God asks us is what we need to look at tonight. So we're going to get back there, and I'm not leaving you there on purpose, but we're going to get back there. So as we start this series, Questions from God, and the first week being tonight, we're talking through this question, where are you? Where are you? And this is the first question that God ever asks, ever. In scripture, first question he asks is, where are you? So where do we start in this story? Genesis, right? It's the beginning um, if you were at summer camp, um, you kind of heard this, and Jordan did a phenomenal job at summer camp leading us through this grand story, this perfect, flawless story of God putting you in the midst of, of his creation. But in, if you weren't at summer camp, basically, quickly to sum it up, is God built this perfect story, and you are, in part, you are a part of it. I'm a part of it, you're a part of it. If you were at summer camp, you got to experience some of that. If you come to garage, you get to experience that too. But we are within this side of a page and this side of a page of God's story, and it's perfect. And at the very beginning of his story, his perfect story, he asks us a question. From the very beginning, there was this crazy connection. God built this perfect creation of, of land, earth, sea, sky, moon, stars, dark, light, sun, birds, fish, humans. And we had a relationship with him. We had a relationship with God, and it was close. And it wasn't just like, oh, we're close here. I'm from the stage. You're in the chairs. It was like every day. God and his creation was with you. In every instance, you did not, you couldn't ignore that he was with you there in every way. And through some time, right, Adam and Eve, they, they, Adam was there and he said, I need a partner, I need a companion, I need somebody to be with. They created Eve. And then Eve came around and Adam and Eve walked with God and were with God and he was there all the time in the garden. They were literally living, existing with God. So close that he was there every day and any time they needed. 
And then if you read on, we see that Adam and Eve, they eat this, this fruit from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in that moment, sin enters the world. We ruined it in that moment. Adam and Eve take a bite, their eyes are opened, and all they wanted was to, in that moment, was to literally be equal to God. And I, I love the way that Jordan said it at summer camp, and I'm going to kind of touch back because I think he did a great job, and I'm, I'm stealing some of his stuff, basically, is because God created this painting, right? And he paints you in this painting. But the moment that Adam and Eve decided to eat that fruit, what they basically tried to do is hop out of the painting and started to try and make their own. But it's not what we were created to do. We were created to be in the painting with God, who is our creator, not to step out of that painting and to be God. There's no other way. So the moment that we ate that fruit, we were eternally distanced and separated from God. And the question that we're looking at um, is based around the only truth that is true of every single person from that moment on except for Jesus. That we have all sinned, that we are eternally separated from God, and that there's no way to get back to that place without something in the way. There's nothing we can do. We are in that painting stuck, living in a sinful, broken world. Unless we are willing to accept the gift of salvation through the only person who is blameless, perfect, and righteous, Jesus Christ. So in this story, starting in chapter 3, this is right after they ate the, the fruit. It says in verse 6, it says this, and it's going to be on the screen. We'll read it together. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for her and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, Adam, who was with her, and he ate it. Then their eyes were both, uh, their eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they got, they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. And next, next, next slide. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. In this moment right here, what we see is sin enters the world the next moment is they realized that they sinned and there was something different. Something had changed. Something was off. So they hid. And when God came in, he asked, where are you? God created this place for all creation to exist with him and he created it for us, mankind, to exist with him, created him, or us in his image. Every one of us is an image bearer of him. Whether you know it, believe it or not, you are made in his perfect image right now. But every single one of us has messed up, has sinned, and is eternally separated from him. Almost instantly we ruined it, right? There was maybe a few days, I don't know, who knows what, time, what the timeline looked like. But there was one way to ruin it, and we did it because we thought we could be equal to God. We thought we could step out of that painting and create our own way. And so often I think that's where we fall. Because we think we can create our own way but we don't. That's not our place. Instead, we need to be content
repent and accept the fact that we are inside that painting, being sculpted, molded into his story, his perfect story, not ours. So back to God's question, he asks, where are you? He asked Adam and Eve, and in this one question, there's an entirely new experience of God. He had just built this perfect plan, and we ruined it. And he had never asked a question before because he was the creator. It was perfect. So everything was different there. We had sin and ultimately separated ourselves from existing with God the way he intended it to, right? And what did we do when we knew the difference between existing with God and from when we decided something had changed? We hid. We hid from our creator, from the creator. So when we hide from him, why are we hiding? Because we know that something has changed and something will be different moving forward. We will never be able to interact and engage with God the same way that we were before. We have literally moved away from him. He has not moved. We have moved. From the very first time that sin entered the world, something was different and we knew it. And that's why God asks us that first question. Where are you? The only thing that changed in that day from that time, from when they knew something was different to exactly this moment right now on Sunday at Garage, is this. This is what has changed. Everything. Everything has changed in our world because of that sin. Because of sin that exists in the world today, everything has changed. He has not changed but this world has changed. Everything has been different from the moment for all of us. There's no, or there's an eternity of distance from God because of that moment and where we are right now. Nothing can be done on our part. We're set apart from God the way he created us to be with him in that moment. But then there was something so perfect and, and part of his plan. Something so perfect that could help us get back to his perfect plan, into his grand story. <clears throat> and that's his son, Jesus Christ. The only way we will have that closeness with God ever again is through Jesus, and that is it. Jesus came into the world to bridge every single gap that exists between God and every single one of you. And it doesn't matter how far you walk away, he's got a bridge that big. Knowing who Jesus is and believing in him and what he has done for you yesterday, today, and tomorrow and forever is the only way to have closeness with God again. It's the only way that we can know and live with our God and our creator and fit into his plan perfectly is because of his son, Jesus. I've said it a, a lot before, um, it's something I, I think I say quite often. Is knowing Jesus changes everything. Everything is different from the moment that sin entered the world, but knowing Jesus changes everything back to normal and back to perfection and back to the way he planned for it. Band, you guys can come back up. 
So the question for you and the question for me is the very same that God asked when he walked into the garden. Is where are you? Where are you at when you know that you are walking away from God? By now, there's, there's not a whole lot of things that aren't spelt out for you to know that this is right and this is wrong. There's some gray area in, in some things, but for the most part, I believe there's, there's kind of a gut feeling of following what's right and what's wrong. We can go into the nitty-gritty of the gray, and that, that's where, you know, we get to really, really dig in. But knowing where you're at with God is important. And so are we choosing to sin and are we, are we hiding our sin from God and, and, and putting on these fig leaves and, and stepping away so that he can't see us? Because he sees you. What you're really doing is hiding from people that are in this room, your family, your friends, and trying to save face and, and your reputation and have it all together. When the reality is, is we all... We all have sinned and fallen short. There's nothing else. But the very same way that God came into the Garden of Eden and was planning to meet with Adam and Eve like he did on every day, walking on the cool of the day to come and be with us, I think a, a, a better question is, are we hesitant to meet him there? In, in the moments where we know we're walking away from our God and something inside of you because you believe in him, he asks you, he, he speaks to you. I think he, you hear him and he says, where are you? And that's when you are hiding, stepping back. Why are we hesitating to meet him when we know he's the only way to go back to perfection? So are you hesitant to meet him? If so, what are you hiding behind? And I would say, for me, there was times in my life where I did not hear God speak. And so it took something else. And so the, back to that story I started off with when I was doing dumb things. I couldn't hear God speak to me. I didn't have that, that pit in my stomach where I knew I was doing something wrong, but I couldn't acknowledge it, I guess, or I didn't know what was happening. What I needed was somebody there with authority, somebody there with a relationship with God, somebody who knew who I was and where I was because they knew me to say something. So for me, that was Jeremy. I was not near enough to God to hear God say, Jack, stop doing these dumb things. It took Jeremy to say, Jack, stop doing these dumb things. And then I heard, God. Not to call judgment on me, not to call condemnation, not to, to just point a finger but to call you to transformation, call you back into his perfection. God doesn't wish to see you away from him, but to come to him. So what sin are you hiding? Who can you share with to hear his voice? Because his goal is to be near to you and to hear you more than anything. He wants to walk in the cool of the day with you every day. So next time you're reading scripture and you're doing a devotional or you're just opening a Bible and you see God's question and he asks something, he's asking you a question. And in this series, we're going to look at these questions and we're going to look at 
things that you and I, we all need to look at and go, God is speaking to me. And tonight I wanted us to start here because it actually tells us where you are. So if God walked into the door tonight and said, where are you? Would you run out the door? Would you get under the chair? Would you hide behind your friends? Or would you go meet him and say, this is where I'm at and I need you to make me perfect? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for um, tonight and just uh, what we get to do in, in a garage, being able to understand um, more of who you are and, and, and you're part of the story or our part of the story that you've created. Now we're a part of it. We're, we're a page turn into your perfect plan, God. Would you help us to know that when we do sin, and it's, it's not shame, but that we can turn to you and know that you are with us and that you care for us and you want us to be with you over everything. We love you, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. So we're going to do a, something a little different tonight, um, just coming back from camp. So if you weren't at camp, the last night we had this really amazing experience where everyone was praying over each other. Like leaders were praying over leaders, leaders were praying over students, students were praying over leaders, students were praying over other students. Like it was just filled with prayer and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we want to keep that momentum and we want to be people of prayer. Um, and so tonight I just want to share a little something that I was reading through this last week. And I was reading through my devotional, and it was talking about how often we find ourselves being a, in, like, amazement of who God is. Like, we're amazed by what he's done. We're amazed by how he showed up at camp. We're amazed by all these things that he's doing in our life. But we're not actually allowing that amazement of him to lead us into intimacy with him. We don't want to just be people that are amazed by what he did at camp last Saturday or amazed by the things that he's done. We want to be people that are amazed by what he has done in our lives and are led to be near to him, are led to answer that question, this is where I'm at, God, really authentically. And so, um, yeah, just to keep in that spirit, we're gonna not do a first song. We're just gonna do prayer. So get in groups of however large you'd like to be in, or if you feel led to pray by yourself and just have a moment in the nearness and presence of God, then you can do that. But we're going to pray for a little bit with each other and just pray over each other that we would not just be amazed by how good God is, but that we would want to grow in great intimacy with him. Um, and then we're going to have a song to end. And when that song starts, uh, we can stop praying and just start worshiping. So that being said, go ahead and get in your groups or get off wherever you want to be alone, and I'll just kick us off with prayer and pray with each other, pray by yourselves, and talk to God. So, yeah, Holy Spirit, we just invite you here. We know that you are not a God that just shows up in the mountains, that you're not just a God that shows up at camp, you're not just a God that shows up um, on Sundays that you are a God that is near to us and with us always. And you desire us not to run away from you in shame and hide, but instead to come before you and be able to see the goodness that you have for us instead. And so I pray, Lord, that just during this time, we would experience your presence more tonight in a very real way. Amen.
Cause that's not enough to get through the rough. Oh, I need a Monday morning play. I want to hear you in more than just one way. Show your voice in all of the Monday things. You're in the in-between. You're in my everything. And that's all. every single morning when we rise, Lord, because you didn't settle. There was not a day in which you woke up and decided to only half give yourself for us. Lord Jesus, you went and you gave your whole self for us, and we love you, and we thank you. And would you be with us tonight? You made me pray. Amen. Ooh. Let's see. Um, after hours tonight, we're going to Sonic, uh, 8.30, um, trying to get through, I don't know, we might do powwows after this, uh, if you have enough time, trying to get there, um, say every week, love, prayed for, and accepted here, just as you are, 
Come on Wednesday night. Go in peace and serve the Lord.